Sigma just announced their brand new prime lens, the 500mm f5.6 Sports, and I was lucky enough to try it out before the release. And in this video, we're taking a look at how it looks, feels, and how it performs in the real world for bird and wildlife photography. So I uh, grabbed some snacks and let's get into it. So the lens comes in this white Sigma box that you've probably seen before. It comes with a carrying case with a shoulder strap. So if you're carrying with the lens, you can have it in this and the lens is all safe and warm. So when I first opened the box, I was so surprised of how small the lens actually is. So the lens feels very compact and well built. So the lens weights in at around 1,520 grams. The 500 millimeter F4 from Sigma it's weighing in around 3,600, I think, which is more than double the weight. For another reference, the Sony 200-600 is weighing in at 2,115 grams. So it's a pretty big difference in weight of all of these lenses. So having the aperture of like 5.6 versus f4 makes a very big difference in, in weight. So if you take a look on the design of this little thing, as I said, it feels very compact and I really like that you have an inbuilt Arca Swiss compatible lens foot. I'm not a fan of having to screw things onto the lens and sometimes it happens that those screws loosen and you drop the lens and so that is a very big plus in my opinion. So if we take a look at the side of the lens, we see a focus switch at the top. Then we have a focus distance switch. You can go from full to 10 meters to infinity and 3.2 to 10 meters. This is good when you know that your subject is gonna be like within 3.2 to 10 meters. Then we have the stabilization switch. And if you put this to one, it will stabilize in all of the different, uh, both horizontal and vertical. So it's great for handheld shooting and, and so on. If you switch it to two, this is good for panning shots. If you're standing and shooting, I don't know, sports cars or something and it's always going in this like direction and then we have the custom c1 and c2 configuration switches that we've seen on on previous sigma lenses these are programmable with the sigma usb docking station and uh, never something i personally have used or probably will use but i think it's a very cool thing and this lens also has an aperture ring so you can control the aperture by hand physically you can decide if you want it to be clicky or smooth with the switch on the side of the lens and speaking of programmable buttons you have these black buttons on each side of the lens which by default is set to uh, af locks which will lock the focus uh, for like recomposition and so on but if you're using back button focusing on your camera, this is not like a feature that you need because just releasing the back button will do the same thing. But you can actually change what these buttons do, which is a very big plus. So as all of these Sigma lenses in the sports lineup, this lens is splash and dust resistant. And that means you can have it in light rain and in, in these kind of weathers, but I wouldn't use it in heavy rain because that will probably not be good. So let's talk about the handling of this lens. And this is where I think this lens really shines. So the weight distribution when you're using with the a7 IV is really good. It really feels balanced and still very lightweight. And the focus ring feels great. It has the perfect amount of like resistance. It's, it's very the mellan mjölk as it's here in Swedish there. It's the perfect balance between just medium. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> We love Mellan Mjölk here in Sweden. So again, coming back to the weight, it feels very good in the hand when using it. It's so lightweight, so be able to like doing handheld shots with it is so easy. And it's easier to get stable footage with it because it's not that heavy. You don't have to like, uh, like with the, the under 500 F4 and sometimes the 200 to 600 by Sony as well. It's Those lenses are more heavy and it's, it makes it trickier to, to get like stable footage and, and so on. So I, I really, really like the handling of this lens. One downside, however, <laughs> is the, the little gap between the lens foot and, and the, um, the lens. I personally would have wanted it to be a bigger gap because I want to fit my whole hand underneath to be able to carry it because I, I always carry the lens in that foot. So that is a downside in my opinion. It's not a deal breaker, but it's a little detail. So what you're all probably wondering, what about the image quality? 
how does it perform? So the sharpness of this lens is really good and honestly didn't come as a shock because my experience with Sigma art and sports glasses are really good. I haven't had really any issues with the sharpness on Sigma's latest lenses. So I'm very pleased to see that this lens performs as well. So if we take a look at the details of some of these photos, we have razor sharp results at aperture 5.6. And so I think like super telephoto lenses like this are designed to perform at the like the widest aperture because when you're using 500 millimeters you're probably shooting something wildlife or sports where you need a lots of light so having a super telephoto lens with with a low f-stop that doesn't perform is pretty useless so i think the the sharpness at 5.6 is really great on this lens and i try to stop down to f8 and f11 and so on and the sharpness is really, really good. So for me to have a lens that performs at the widest aperture is very important. I'm really glad that this lens performs the way it does. So I've been talking about this before, but I've said that prime lenses have this kind of 3D pop to it. And this lens is no different. It's something with the, how it like renders the light. So when you're close to the subject, you can get a pretty blurry background with this lens and I, I really like how it looks. Uh, the bokeh balls looks great. They again they give you the prime feeling and it's obviously not as good as like f4 but that is also why the f4 costs 6,000 euros and I haven't really seen any chromatic aberration on the photos. So when shooting with a backlit subject this lens performs really good as well. It looks very uh, pleasing and I haven't had really any issues with flaring and uh, ghosting and so on. So uh, very good job by Sigma with the glass on this lens. But it kind of should be because of the price. And we're going to talk about the price a little bit later. Uh, so what about the autofocus of this lens? So uh, that is also a very important thing <laughs> when shooting uh, birds and wildlife. The ice is cracking. I should get out of here. So this lens is equipped with a high-speed HLA motor, which is said to deliver fast and accurate autofocus. This sounds so selling, I know, but Sigma is definitely staying true to their words here. So during the time with this lens, the autofocus has rarely let me down. So I think it has been very quick and accurate for shooting stills. I really have not had any issues with it. So with bird eye autofocus enabled on the camera, you snap away and the photo is sharp at the bird's eye then i must say the autofocus is accurate uh, i unfortunately haven't really had the possibility to try it out on like flying eagles more than like one that just flew past me but it would be nice to try it out on like an owl flying and stuff so i would easily trust this in terms of autofocus on a like hide session or any other important photography mission so um same goes for video the autofocus has been very smooth and accurate most of the times. There was one situation where I really couldn't get the bird in focus. And I'm pretty sure that this is a camera issue or me <laughs> behind the camera issue. It was just this kingfisher sitting like 20 meters away with a very busy background very close to the bird. And that could be pretty hard sometimes for the, for the camera to pick up. But again, I think it's in the camera and not in the lens. So it's getting pretty dark now. There we go. <laughs> a very big plus with autofocus in video is that it's completely silent. Uh, compared to like the 500 f4 that makes a noise like all the time when it's trying to hunt for focus. And I usually record video in with the like inbuilt microphone just for like running on wildlife filming. And that lens is basically impossible to record audio with because the, the sound of the autofocus is picked up by the camera. Uh, this is not an issue with this lens. I can't hear it in any of the recordings. So I'm really pleased with the autofocus in the video as well. So another very important thing to have in a wildlife and bird photography lens is image stabilization. So at the focal length of 500 millimeters, when you're hand holding a lens, the small shakes you do will be magnified and you will need some sort of stabilization to be able to get any types of footage if it's both for video and for stills. 
Otherwise, you really need to use a very fast shutter speed or a tripod. I think the stabilization of this lens is very good. So it is rated to have a stabilization effect of five stops. When hand-holding, you can actually use very slow shutter speeds and still get sharp results. So I tried to stress test this a bit. So I tried to take a photo of this running water at one over a tenth of a second. I find it pretty impressive to be honest. This was completely handheld. That's a very, very slow shutter speed for this focal length. So um, I'm very pleased with the stabilization and uh, the size of this lens are making it even easier to get stable footage. So I, if you want the most stable handheld 500 millimeter footage possible, I'd say that this lens will give you just that because of the size and the good stabilization. So I'm, I'm very pleased with how that worked out. So what about the price of this compact, little lightweight prime 500 lens? So at the time of this recording, I don't know the exact price that this thing is gonna be released at, but I know it's gonna be somewhere around 3000 euros. So the price is actually a little bit more than I expected at first. And compared to like the 500 F4, that is 6,000 euros. That's way more expensive and way bigger and larger, blah, blah, blah. And the 200 to 600 is actually cheaper than this lens. So my final thoughts about this lens, I think the biggest downside is the pricing. I, I think it makes it a little difficult to, to try to figure out which like pigeonhole that you're gonna place this lens in as of target customers. So since the Sony, 200 to 600 as I use daily and the Sigma 100 to 50 and 600 has the versatility of a zoom range. They're both cheaper than this lens. Why should I spend more money on this lens compared to, to a super telephoto zoom? So as much as F 5.6 will give you more light or a little bit more light than F 6.3, I wouldn't say it's a reason to sell your F 6.3 lens to get this for the amount of light you're getting. Then I'd save up for a F4 lens instead. I the Tony Owl is calling, <laughs> nice. However, a valid reason to get this lens is because of the lightweight and compact design you get. So, and this combined with great autofocus, uh, solid image stabilization, and that super sharp, 3D prime look makes this a great purchase if you're after the most lightweight and compact like camera setup possible. But if you're more of a run and gun shooter, size and weight isn't as important to you when you're out in the field, or maybe you often use a tripod, maybe a super telephoto zoom lens is better for you. So for a super quick summary, I think it performs very good. It's a great professional level camera lens, but uh, I wouldn't say it's for everybody. The price is to me a little bit expensive, but I do think the, the quality of the lens and the photos you can take with it, if I pay that amount of money and I would get the results that I'm getting with the lens, I wouldn't be disappointed. Then if you're gonna buy it or not, that is up to you. So uh, I guess this is it. We're gonna leave this orange world. <laughs> it's very orange, I'm sorry for that. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.